we go. We are live. Hey guys, we are live. This is Oakley. And Oakley belongs to a cute little girl named Hadley. Hi Hadley. I love your dog here, Oakley. Oh my goodness, he's so cute. Wow. And I saw pictures of her sleeping with him. <laughs> They're so cute together. Okay, so Oakley here. He hey, what's up, TG TG? Nice to see you. So <clears throat> this is my t first time meeting Oakley, um, and I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure if he he understands because I I've been telling him like, hey, I'm a YouTube star, but he doesn't really <laughs> seem to be impressed. So <laughs> that's good. So this is why I love dog grooming though, because dogs all they know is your energy. All they know is your scent and your energy, who you are by your smell. Sometimes immense help, you know, and then. Um, cause men's help calm anyways. And then your energy, what kind of energy are you bringing? Are you calm? You know, I know buddy. And so his, his grandma, they, they've been through a lot. So the thing is, um, he's, he, he, this is probably the first and only time I'm going to be grooming him. Maybe, um, because I think their family's in, uh, in Texas, but so he's here visiting and he's, uh, dear, you know, a dear friend of mine and it's a friend of hers. <laughs> and so... Here I am, here we are, right? Here we are, Oakley, meeting each other for the first time. This is like an awkward first date, okay? Awkward first date. <laughs> and the thing is, it's only, I'm the only one that knew that we were being set up. I, I'm the only one that knew that we were going on this blind date. He didn't know. It's a lot like the first time I met my wife. <laughs> that was good. Um, pretty much the same scenario, okay? <clears throat> I was told we were going on a blind date. She wasn't. Um, <laughs> I was told about this date today. Um, he, he was, but I don't really think he pays attention to all that, you know? I'm not sure if he put it on his schedule, right, Oakley? He just, he doesn't really worry about schedules and stuff like that. He's too, he's too good looking. When you're as good looking as he is, you don't have to, <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> right? Super cute, J. Cake says. Hey, what's up, Claire? Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just, I'm just petting him. I'm just trying to get him relaxed because his grandma just left the room. And he's been crying since she left because that's his that's his comfort. You know, that's what he knows right now. It's you know, they're saying that he's Hadley. You know, she's she loves him so much. She's always combing and brushing him and loving on him and sleeping with him. So she's always there with him. That's her that's his constant, right? And then he knows grandma, he loves grandma, so he's okay with that. And now grandma just left him with this weird Asian guy. <laughs> You know, and I think they try to tell him that I'm famous, but he doesn't, <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> but he doesn't care. You know, I love that, you know, like people are impressed with your reputation. People are impressed with, oh, who you know, stuff like that. Dogs don't care. And I love that. I love that. It's so genuine with dogs. You have to come genuinely, honestly. Oh, there we go. And that's, that's, that's the only way you're going to get them to calm down. <clears throat> oh, Alex. Shout out to Alex Valdivia. He's a, he's a dog trainer here in Atlanta area. A lot of his clients are here in Alf Alpharetta. I'm in Alpharetta today. <laughs> anyways, what's up, Alex? <clears throat> um, anyways, Alex Valdivia told me that we provide the beat. They can hear our heartbeat, literally. So he's saying that we provide the beat. And if you're trying to get a dog to calm down and when they're hyper... You cannot be hyper with them. You cannot let their hyper, their energy affect you. You have to just breathe and you have to calm down. And that way your heartbeat starts to slow down and you provide the beat. They can literally feel it through your, through your fingertips to touch them. So as they get, see that, oh, that nervous energy, at least he's not trembling and shaking. He's just whining. But that energy is, is going less and less, right? Because as I touch him, I start to feel the anxiety. So then, because it, it's an energy transfer. But you know, you just, you just calm. You have to be calm. And then your heartbeat slows down. So he, the way Alex Valdi explained it to me, he was saying, um, imagine if you were living in an apartment and your next door neighbor is um, banging drums all night. You know, boom, 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 you know, loud, right? <laughs> Oakley just looked at me. He was like, <clears throat> but imagine you were living with someone like that and you're trying to meditate or you're just trying to unwind from a long day. It's hard to relax, you know, because 
bang, 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 you know? <laughs> but it, <laughs> every time I do that, he looks at me, watch, I'll go, says, bang, 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 bang. Wow. <laughs> Awesome, but imagine someone's doing that. It's hard to it's hard to calm down. So, by you providing a, a, a slower beat with your heart, ba boom, 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 ba boom. See, ba boom. So you just calm your heartbeat down, and and they literally start to calm down with you because you're providing a slower beat. You know, you're, you're, you're probably going, let's, let's slow dance, baby. You know, this is a love song. I'm just kidding. Anyways, <clears throat> I was, I was dancing. Good thing the camera was on him. <laughs> I, was, I was swaying back and forth. All right. I saved you guys that, or he saved you. Thank you, Oakley. You, you saved my viewers from having to watch me sway. <laughs> Somebody said I looked like, um, <clears throat> Kevin, wow, man, what is his name again? Shoot. <clears throat> you know the comedian, the bigger guy? <clears throat> he was on Mall Cops. What was his name? Kevin something. He was on that movie Hitch with Will Smith. <laughs> David, David was saying that, um, or was it Kevin? I think Kevin. Anyway, somebody was saying I look <laughs> You know, flashback when I was dancing in my car, flashback to Kevin when he, you know, on Hitch. Anyways, that took too long to set up. And the punchline flopped. Man. Okay. It's all good. No one's here for the jokes, you know? Whoa, whoa. whoa. Okay. I forgot that comb was there. <coughs> okay. There we go. Let me just move stuff out away because I'm trying to get a good angle here. I'm trying to find a good place to put the camera so that you guys can see what's going on. And well, I'll put this here. <clears throat> so step one of my four step process is have the keys to your car ready so that if you have to bolt, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just putting my keys away. Um, step one of my process is you have to build rapport with the dog. You have to get the dog to just get used to you. It just gets used to your energy. And that way they can at least feel comfortable with you touching them first. You know, the way I, the way I compare it is a dentist coming out and shaking your hand, you know, or when you go in, you know, because a lot of times they're busy, so I know they can't always come out to the lobby and shake your hand. But it's, I compare it to a dentist shaking your hand, you know, before... before to work on you now just to calm you down just to say hey my name is dr so-and-so you know i know this might be scary but you know i'm gonna i'm gonna do my best or something whatever you know but <clears throat> you know just calming you down before actually doing the, the dental work He's uh, harnessed by the shoulder and chest, around the shoulder and chest, and he can lay down here. So, you know, I'm gonna have to find a better place to put this. But anyways, he's like that. So he can lay down comfortably. It's not around his neck, it's around his shoulder and chest. And that way he stands. Still plenty of room to move around comfortably, but it, it discourages him from trying to jump off the table. So it's right there. There we go, perfect, all right. Not perfect, but you know, we'll work with that. So, um, what I was explaining to his, uh, his grandma, because Hadley his mom, is his mom, what I was explaining to his grandma is that what I like to do is I like to get this uh, metal comb to go through the coat, you know, like that. This, this area is really nice, wow. So it's not like his whole body is tangled up and it's gonna take me forever, you know, no, it's not. It's just that a few areas are kind of tangled up. I'm sorry, buddy. And a few areas are tangled up, like here on his tail. And he's, it's gonna probably make him feel uncomfortable. 
So we're just gonna have to work with that and try to be gentle, use gentle tools, and just kind of work with it, right? Oh, perfect. Look at this. I love coming here because his, um, the owners here, they provide me with all the <laughs> tools and the well, products. So this is from Equis, Equis Elite Detangler. Equis is an amazing brand, look at that. Okay, so Equis Detangler, boom, boom, right? You don't need a lot, just a little, right? Just to get it, miss it on that coat, right? Get those hairs to absorb that conditioning spray, that detangler. Boom, look at that. So now, all the tangles are out of the coat. I mean, uh, out of that tail. Look at that, boom. So once this comb can can go slide through that coat, right that, right? And I get these little tangles and these dead hairs out. Then, <coughs> I know that this tail is ready to be washed. Not only is it gonna be easier to wash, it's gonna be easier to dry. It's gonna dry faster. Because they're telling me that he, he kind of, he really doesn't like the dryer noise or lawnmowers or anything loud like that. He kind of, it, it upsets him. So, um, you know, I was telling them that if worse comes to worse, then because I'm going to get all this, all this, uh, dead underwear, you know, last season's underwear, <laughs> because I'm going to get the, all this old hair out, be, um, when I wash him, he's going to wash easily. And when I dry him, he's gonna pretty much air dry, you know? And if he doesn't really like the blow dryer, then I'll stop and I'll brush him, you know, and I'll do some trimming around his feet or, you know, do the trimming work. And then, you know, try light brushing him again while I dry him. If not, it's okay. Because the last season, all this dead undercoat, this fuzzy, wooly stuff that's holding on to all the moisture and keeping that, that skin even though the top coat may seem dry, at the skin, this is the skin level, it just hangs out right there at the skin level. The skin's gonna stay damp and the skin's gonna get nasty. And that's why you get a dog that smells a few days later or when they get wet, you know? <clears throat> so, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. He's like, okay, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. So, we have to, you know, we don't have to. You don't have to, but I prefer to. So this is just my style. I like to get him fully brushed, you know, thoroughly combed out. And that way his his coat is already feeling nice and his skin is clear. See, my thing is skin care. I want to focus on skin care and keeping that skin clear. Clear those pores out, you know? And that way the pores are clear by re removing the hairs and everything that comes out. And it's so light and so fine that you can barely even see it until you get enough of it. It turns into a ball. <clears throat> but you, you get, by getting those out of the skin, now the skin has room for the conditioner, you know, for the shampoo, for the water to go inside the pores and actually clean the skin, actually, you know, condition it properly. <clears throat> so then he pretty much will air dry on his own. Um, you know, I can just help by combing and brushing it while it air dries and do some trimming. And that's it. And they like to keep them in full coat, you know? So I won't even have to bust out the clippers much. So, oh, my daughter just sent me a message. Hi, dad. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to reply to her. Oh, oh. I'm sorry about that, buddy. Oh man, that was a, that was a tangle right there. I was kind of matted right there, but Oh, she said she's, okay, I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna pause this real quick. My daughter said, be a picture. Sorry, guys. <coughs> My daughter sent me a message about, well, this one is her reply. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that, guys. I, 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 I got a message from my younger daughter and I wanted to reply back to her. She sent me a message, like that, uh, an allergic reaction, allergy to it. But um, this morning even, I kind of, I kind of uh, threw up a little bit. I was coughing anyways. So, <clears throat> sorry about the coughing. That's why I have a cough drop. <clears throat> but yeah, ever since Sunday, <clears throat> that great Pyrenees, oh man. <laughs> not to make you feel bad. Ingrid, if you're watching this, oh man, not to make you feel bad. I, I totally loved it. It's just, you know, I was this close to the coat and all the dander was coming in. <clears throat> I was breathing it all in. I didn't have a mask that day. 
<sighs> so anyways, <clears throat> so let me just grab another drink of water. So sorry guys. And also, if you guys don't know my history, <laughs> well, how would you know, right? The history of June, you're gonna get a quiz. Anyways, um, I had a surgery, what, my sophomore year in high school, like back in 94, but I had surgery in my nose because my canals <clears throat> are, too, are too small. And then they took my adenoids out, you know, the tonsils behind the back of the nasal canal. They took that out because those were too big. So I was literally choking to death. I was always suffocating. It was my whole life. So I always had that problem. So they drilled a hole through my, with the laser um, from my nasal canal directly down to my throat. So it just goes like right there. So <coughs> that's why I'm always like coughing and cleaning my throat and having these troubles because <clears throat> I literally have been, but at least I can breathe now <sighs> because it's kind of cheating. It's not really going through my nasal cavities like everybody else. It's just going directly down to right, right through my throat through this hole that they drilled through a laser. <laughs> so um, that's what causes all of this <clears throat> irritation in my throat and everything. People are saying like, hey, June, get checked out. I mean, <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to do? Okay, so, but thank you for bearing with me. Thank you so much for tolerating my coughing and choking and that. There we go. And that's why <clears throat> this past weekend at the Atlanta Pet Fair, people coming up to me wanting to take pictures. Oh my God, people are taking selfies with me. Isn't that crazy? And like, okay, so, and I, I would ask them like, why do you, why do you watch the channel? Are you crazy? Are you nuts? Why do you watch my channel? Um... Like, seriously, why do you watch my channel? Should I be worried about you? Am I, I, you know, like, should I be running right now? Anyways, um, no, seriously, though, I, I asked them, like, what about the channel do you really like? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm recording off of my iPhone, an old iPhone. This girl ragged on me. She's like, you got an old iPhone. Anyways, made me feel bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just recording off my old iPhone. I'm like, why do you watch my channel? You know, like, but they say because... They, they just love how they you get really helpful grooming tips. It helps them with their dogs. And that's really what I wanted. That's why I was like, that's, I guess, mission accomplished, right? Because that's what my channel was made for. I wanted to help. I, it said, it says on my channel. Well, I don't know. I changed it. I'm not sure if it says this anymore. But originally, it said, I want to help owners better understand the importance of proper of proper grooming. <laughs> and the effect, the long-term effects it has on a dog's lives. And so, yeah, I guess mission accomplished, right? They said that's why they watch the channel. They have no other reason to. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Perfect. I'm not sure if any more comments are coming in. I'm not sure if I lost connection here, but, you know, I'm just going to keep going. I'm sorry, buddy. So, <clears throat> I'm not a big fan. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm not a big fan of uh, like holding on to their their arm, you know, like even when they're pulling away and pulling away, because a lot of people say like, oh, you know, then the. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. You know, I know in normal situations, in normal situations, yes, when they're pulling their paw away, of course, you know, like if you're trying to train them to do something, wait till they're calmed down and then let go of the paw, so they learn that when they're calm you let go of their paw. I understand that. That's a great training technique. But I feel like when you're grooming a dog, <laughs> you're already asking for so much and they're already giving you so much. You know, I mean, could you imagine me doing this to a wolf or a coyote or a tiger or a bear, you name it, any other animal, even a beaver. You know, even a platypus, I hear, will kill you. I hear a platypus will kill you. So even a platypus that looks so cute. No, no other dog, I mean, no other animal, no other species will actually give me this much cooperation and trust, even this much, you know, like while I'm doing uncomfortable things to his, his coat. I'm, I'm cutting away here at these mats here. I'm tugging away at his skin. But here, look, see, he's he's still... He's, he's allowing me to do it because he trusts me now. And we don't have this connection with any other animal. I mean, <laughs> maybe some cats, but only with their owners. They're not, gonna, they're not just going to give this kind of trust up to a stranger they just met, you know? 
So this is very special. This is a very special connection we have. Man has with dog. They just, it's, it's just, you know, centuries and centuries, you know, of, of just breeding and working with them side by side. It's just, I feel like it's just in their DNA to, to trust us, but we have to earn that trust, you know, like we can't just, we can't just start, you know, running our fingers through their hair the first time we meet them. Like, you know, we have to get them comfortable with us first, right? The, the way I compare it is, what if we were at the playground and my daughters were playing and a man that I don't know, they don't know, <clears throat> even if he looks nice, nice smile and everything, he looks super happy. Um, he, run, he goes up to them and runs his finger through their hair, right? That would be very, very unacceptable, socially unacceptable, right? Same thing with the dogs. If the dogs were in a pack and they were just chilling, they were just hanging out, they were licking each other, grooming each other, licking each other's ears. And another dog that they don't know, happy-go-lucky, comes up to the group and starts licking the other dogs, you know? Maybe even like licking another dog's, you know, nuts or something. I'm just, you know, not to be crude, but I'm just saying, let's, let's just say that he did something very intimate like that. You know, starts, starts licking the other dog's ears, you know, nibbling away at a mat. And these dogs don't know that dog. That dog would get, that dog would probably get kicked out of that group real fast. Chased out of that group, you know, if not put down. Because they might even see that as like an evolutionary threat, you know. <laughs> this dog is so idiotic and so disrespectful. It might be a threat to our species, you know, if he gets to procreate. So they might just take him out, you know. I mean, I don't know. I'm making this stuff up. But <laughs> what I'm saying is that not the part that a strange dog can't, you know, can't go up to. A, yeah, that's true. A strange dog that's not part of the group cannot go up to another dog that they don't know and just start grooming it. Unless it's a mating season, it's like a trap, you know, they're about to mate, like, and they don't, you know, it's a dog from another group, another female from another group, and then, you know, then they start with grooming. But that's the thing, isn't that right? Even when they're about to get it on, it seems like grooming seems to be, you know, the four, <laughs> uh, not to, oh man. But, you know, not to get, you know, I'm just saying, like, it's, it's a very intimate thing. It's, a, it's things that uh, uh, in the animal world, a uh, mother would do with their cub, you know? So, this is why I'm at, I, this is why I joined Toastmasters. <laughs> I was like, man, and yeah, I need, to, I need to learn how to just stay on point and keep it on the topic, okay? So it looks like we still have six people watching, but I don't know, the comments are not coming in. Maybe because I disconnected and then reconnected, I can't see the comments, but all right, so I'll just pretend that no one has any questions because I, I can't see any comments coming in. So we'll just do this. You know what? <clears throat> Maybe what I'll do is because we had the interruption and I'm not sure if we... I'm going to go ahead and end this and then start another one. Um, and I'll just do step two because I, mean, I, I was trying to show step one where, you know, I get him comfortable with me first and then I start brushing. <clears throat> so we're at 25 minutes. We'll stop this right now. And then I'll start another one, <laughs> um, step two. And then we'll see if, you know, we'll see if we can keep that.